This is Finished Work TV, a place of inspiration, wisdom, and revelation. As you listen and receive God's Word today, your life will never remain the same. My story. Thank you for being the healer. Thank you for the things you do. I want us to thank Him this evening. His word is true. His word heals. His word transforms. Every situation finds their solution in God's word. Every crisis has an attention that comes from the word that can change it. Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for the release of your presence. Thank you for the things you do and how you do them. Father, we'll receive the engrafted word tonight. Minister healing to people. Direction for their dreams. Wisdom for their journey. Understanding for their purpose. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen. You can take your seat. How to receive help from God. How to receive help from God. How to receive help from God. God's will for you and I is to live a life of victory. I said God's will for you and for me is to live a life of victory. And that life of victory begins when we have the revelation of what God has done for us. I said that life of victory begins with the revelation of what God has done for us. And God is willing to exceed your expectation if you can trust what his word has said and what his spirit is saying. I said that you can, God can exceed your expectations if you can trust what his word has said and what his spirit is saying. There is something God's word has said. And there is something the Spirit of God is saying. There is something God's word has said. There is something the Spirit of God is saying. You know, God can say, God can say something to me right now. Friedman, I want you to go left. And I started going left. And God said, stop going left. Flexibility is required in the pursuit of your purpose. Flexibility. The man that God is going to help must cultivate spiritual sensitivity that can position him or her in a place of being flexible. God said I should go left. Welcome, Pastor. <laughs> God said I should go left. And I started going left. And the same God said, stop going left, go right. For you to receive help from God, you have to intentionally position yourself. 
I said, for you to receive help from God, you have to intentionally position yourself. You have to be intentional in your positioning to get help from God. God was going to help Ruth. But she was smart in making the connection with Naomi. Ruth lost her husband. The tendency of leaving, going back to her parents was there. But she was sensitive in the spirit that destiny, is, destiny hasn't ended at the death of my husband. Those who can see beyond their crisis will assess opportunity for help. Those who can see beyond their crisis. Ruth saw beyond what she was going through and decided to stand with Naomi to help Naomi get strong emotionally, get strong mentally, and support her journey. Sometimes when people are going through challenging time or difficult time, they become selfish, self-centered. They are focusing on their problem. But focusing on the problem doesn't solve the problem most of the time. What solves the problem is to find someone to help and then God comes. You find someone to help. Look at the condition of roots. She have lost her husband. Oprah have left. In short, Naomi was telling them, go back to your parents. Go back to your parents. Can I say this to you? You must see beyond your troubles if you want to see possibilities. You must see beyond your current situation to see the destiny ahead of you. You must see beyond what you're going through right now to begin to see a bright future. Once you begin to see a bright future, it will change your behavior. And look at what Ruth did. She said to Naomi, I'm not going. I'm not going to let you go. Your people shall be my people. You know, she was connected. She was connected to that relationship. She was positioning herself for help. Help was her head. Help is called Boaz. Boaz was her head. There are people who have missed their moment of destiny because they allowed the voice of their situation to rob them of their future. They were listening more to what they were going through. Or knowing to them that what they were going through should be a stepping stone to the things God can do in their lives. And look at what Ruth did. She stayed connected to Naomi. Was helping her emotionally. Was encouraging her. Mommy is going to be okay. Mommy is going to be fine. Mommy, let's go. This is not the end of, you know, when you sow encouragement, it comes back to you. When you sow encouragement, it comes back to you. One of the greatest seeds you can sow if you're on your way to your destiny is to sow encouragement. It's to sow hope. It's to sow direction. It's to sow encouragement. And Ruth was saying, Mommy, everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be fine. Don't let your trouble make you miss your season. Don't let your trouble make you lose the season of help that God has positioned. Most times when people are going through problems and challenges, they abandon their place of purpose. They abandon their place of service. They start giving reason why they won't be committed because now they are trying to solve their problem. But I've come to realize something after 27 years that for you to receive help, you have to be positioned. Help won't come to you because you're a child of God. Help will come to you because you are a child of God that is positioned to receive the help. You have to position yourself for the help. Why? Because most of the time that God wants to help you is going to pass through human vessels. 
Most times that God wants to help you is going to pass through human vessel. It is how positioned you are, especially when it comes to doing the will of God and staying with what God has told you. Man, you will see help. I can tell you. He will begin to send you on common helpers. People start showing up. Why? Because you are positioned in a place where help can connect with you. I can remember I have this relationship I've been into for years. And I just relate to the person, maybe so seed, maybe gift items and things like that. And one time I had a challenge in life. And this person looked at me and said, Apostle, go and sleep. God will wake people up to fix it. Apostle, I'll go and talk to some people to see what they can do expect feedback from me there are relationships you have to cultivate today because of tomorrow if you don't water it now it can't give you fruit tomorrow and the that relationship paid off indeed it paid off heavily because at that point of my life nowhere to get help that relationship became my lifeline imagine that I was not positioned in that relationship. What am I trying to say to you? Ruth was positioned. That was why she unlocked Boaz. Boaz did not just show up. It was positioning. The man that God is going to help has to position himself spiritually and physically. Yes, you have to position yourself spiritually. And you have to also position yourself physically where God wants me to be. Your help will come from where God sent you. Your help won't come by being smart. That's not how your help is going to come. Most things you're looking for are close to you. But you have to be positioned for it to flow towards you. Most things people are looking for. Sometimes some suffering is not necessary. Believe me, church. Sometimes people are going through some things. It's not necessary. There is positioning that attracts uncommon help. If you are not positioned, it doesn't matter how you pray. The purpose of the, the, purpose of the prayer is to get instruction to be positioned. God said, stand here. Ah, but everybody pass me now. Everybody pass me. The Lord of my friend don't pass me. Sir. This other person don't pass me. Everybody don't go ahead of me. He said, stand here. That was what he told you. He said, but look at this other one friend now. Look at this other of my friend. Make this a fine work way. You know, look at this other of my friend now. Look at this now. Look at that now. Divine instruction is the seed that unlock uncommon resources. Divine instruction is the seed that unlocks uncommon resources. Divine instruction. Your help is connected to where God instructed you to go. I want to say that again. I said your help is connected to where God instructed you to go. If you're going to get divine help, you need to be positioned. So the first thing is, I have to be flexible. I have to be flexible. How do I become flexible? Number one, I need to renew my mind with God's word daily. I need to renew my mind with God's word daily. Every day, I need to read my Bible to renew my mind. I need to renew my mind. Because if my mind is not renewed, I cannot flow with God's instructions. If my mind is not renewed, I can't flow with God's instruction. The man who is going to receive help from God has to renew his mind with God's word. Stop seeing, stop seeing that things are not working. Stop saying things are not working. Things are working for you. That's what you should be saying. We don't have money. We have money. Our God will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. <laughs> A friend told me, is it the before yesterday, Apostle, that I've not seen cash. He was telling me I've not seen cash for the past three weeks, but he has not lacked whatever he needs. 
<laughs> so he has to switch to the other realm, call the supernatural realm. He says, I have not seen cash, but everything he needs to do, he's doing them. And how do you do things like that? Number one, renew your mind with God's word. Stop speaking the situation, start speaking God's word. Your, your speaking, your communication, your declaration should not be based on the situation. Start speaking the word. Speak the word. I have the money. We we'll have the resources. A man who is going to receive help from God, don't forget this, that man has to see God as his source. When you see God as your source, it will change your behavior. God is my source. Psalm 23, verse 1, the psalmist said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Simple psalm, but very powerful. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not want for money. I shall not want for opportunity. I shall not want for preferential treatment. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The outcome of the election will not determine your destiny. It is the outcome of the word of God you have that will determine your destiny. Even in America, a blessed land, people are still homeless. Yes. Even in the UK, people are homeless. There are those who can't pay their mortgage. There are those their house was repossessed. They vote, vote right. But one thing I want to let you know is that God has to be your source. If God is not your source, the pressure of the adjustment coming up in the next seven to eight months can affect your health. God is my source. I look unto the hill from whence come at my help. My help comes from the Lord. That must be your declaration. God is my source. God is my source. You must say that all the time. God is my source. Who is your source? God is my source. My job is not my source. My job is not my source. My skill is not my source. But God is my source. You must say that. Why should you say that? Faith comes by hearing. And confidence is developed by declaration. Huh? Faith comes by hearing. And confidence is developed by declaration. Faith comes by hearing. The man that God is going to help must see God as his source, not the job. Do the job with a good heart, but God is my source. Do the job with a good heart. Faith and job can frustrate your vision. Faith and job. Faith and business. It is good to do your business. Work hard, labor hard, whatever you can do that is in line with the law of the land. Do it with integrity, but don't put your faith there. Your faith should be in God. The Bible said have faith in God, not faith in job. Do the job, but your faith is in God. I'm trusting God. While I'm walking in that place, I'm trusting God. While I'm doing that business, I'm trusting God. The man that God will help must have the revelation that God is your source. This revelation that God is your source is the cure to depression. It's the cure to anxiety. It's the cure to frustration. God is my source. I was talking to a friend today, one of my sons like that, who is a lawyer, young man, you know. I said, I'm praying for you to be the chief judge one day. He said, Pastor, don't be like that. I have a calling. That I, should, I shouldn't forget that it's called to ministry. I said, oh, that's your calling. Never forget that. I said, I'll go forget my calling. <laughs> he said, at this law work, I won't get some money as I go go into missions. Now, this calling he had is over 20 years ago. He had over 24 or 25 years ago. As long as I know him, I know that that call was there. He never lost sight of what God told him. No matter his situation, his calling is his focus. Can I say this to you? When God is your source, you don't lose sight of where you're going. When God is your source, there is someone here today. Stop looking at what you can do. Start looking at what Jesus has done. The God who multiplied five loaves to bring the money for the rent. The God who multiplied five loaves to bring the money to buy the house. Yes? The God who multiplied the loaves will bring the money to buy the car, to buy the business, to do the business. Can I say this to you? Your faith in God is an indication that you're looking up to God for help. Your faith in God. The man that God is going to help must see God as his source. God is my source. My gifts are not my source. The anointing is not my source. God is my source. God is my source. This is the confection of the man God will help. 
God is my source. God is my source. God is going to help me. You're quick to say, God is going to help me. Not to frown your face, not to be angry, not to be mad. No, 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 no. Don't be angry at anybody. Nobody's responsible for your situation. Don't be mad at anybody. God is my helper. God is going to help me. God is going to supply all my needs today. I'm going to have provision. I look onto the hill from whence comes my help. My help comes from God. God is going to help me. I have help today. Let me say this to you. When you begin to make that kind of declaration, if you ever have a BP problem, to start dropping. If you have a problem with depression, it starts going off. If you have a problem with anxiety, it starts going off. Why? Because that declaration that God is my helper introduces a new atmosphere around you that causes your body to be relaxed. God is my helper. God is my helper. He's going to help me with this. God is going to help me with this. The money is coming. God is going to help me with this. He's helping me with this business. He's helping me with this vision. He's helping me with this assignment. God is my helper. The man that God will help must have this revelation that God is the helper. The man who is going to receive help from God must have this revelation that God is my helper. Most people you know now that you want to run to, most of them have problems. They don't have the money. You run to somebody, sir, can you help me? He said, are you not seeing what's happening in Nigeria? Is it not true? Talk to me, somebody. Is it not what they would say? They say, are you not seeing? Are you not seeing? Yes, we are seeing, we are hearing. But we have another economy. God is my helper. <laughs> we have another economy. We're imposing the kingdom economy on this economy. <laughs> I said, we're imposing the kingdom economy on this economy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that is what I said. I said, we are imposing the kingdom economy on this economy. In this dryness, you'll be doing big things. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You are the prophet of your own life. Whatever you believe, you're going to receive. I said, in this dry economy, you'll be doing big things. Sir. Do you know that it is in farming that wealth transfer begins to take place? It's in farming when people are going through dryness. Don't see dryness. See plenty. See plenty. There is provision. There is an open door. God is my helper. I look onto the hills from whence cometh my help. There is no need to be mad or to be angry, but there is a need to start your praise party. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I give you praise. <laughs> wow. I'm smiling, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> You know, something happened in our house today. And my wife just opened my house, my room and entered and said, in this dry economy, this is what you're doing. I said, I'm the one ruling the earth. Have you heard the earth is of the Lord? No, tell me. If you are not taking your inheritance, this Bible must work with it, man. I am not carrying this thing for play play. This Bible is the work for me. I don't tell this Bible. You go work for faith, man. I don't want to know how the economy look. This Bible go work for me. When people say there is a casting down, what am I supposed to say? Ha, some people are not knowing that this word work. Oh. Go and check your Bible. Oh. This is not the first time there is a famine. Oh. Remember there was a famine and a Elijah spoke a word and there was a dry season and God sent the raven to take care of him and God sent the rain and the water was dropping the brook. A lot of people, God wants to see it now. Now that it's a cashless economy, let me see whether you have a full faith. Your faith is not cashless. Our God will supply all our needs according to his riches. Change your mindset. The problem is not the cashless economy. The problem is in my mind. I'm going to renew my mind to see what God can do. To see what God is doing. The man that God will help will only believe the word. There is a fish carrying the money. <laughs> they were cashless. So there was cashless. Cashless didn't start today now. 
Read your Bible. Bros, read your Bible. <laughs> they needed to pay tax. You didn't forget your Bible. And he said, go to the river. There is a fish that is carrying the money. <laughs> These things, so they see that no start. In the days of Jesus, there are no cash. But there is another kingdom imposed on that kingdom. He imposed the kingdom economy on it. And they went and there was a fish and the money was there. It is time for mind shift. God can exceed your expectation if truly your faith is alive. I want to say that again. I said God can exceed your expectation if truly your faith is alive. We are not going to stop what we are doing because of the economy. The economy is going to follow us because of what we are doing. How many of you read goodness and mercy shall follow you some days uh, all the days of your life what is supposed to be following you what is part of goodness and mercy uh, goodness eh? money prosperity, abundance, favor goodness and mercy so today goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life so we are going to spend goodness we are going to spend mercy you are rich in mercy you are rich in goodness you can do exchange from those dimensions he said pastor how practical is what you are telling me it's practical when you start believing and saying it and expecting it that's how practical it is when you start believing it, when you start saying it, when you start expecting it, that is how practical it is. How practical is this message? Is that practical as you go into the bathroom to take water to wash your body? That's how practical it is. I believe that God will supply all my needs. My God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Who is going to supply all your need? God will supply all my need. When God is your source, your faith becomes bold. When God is your source, the man that God is going to help must have a progressive revelation that God is my source. As cashless as this economy is, <laughs> You can place order for what you want if your faith is working. The reason why you get the word of God is for situations like this. When nothing is working, the word should be working. I said when nothing is working, the word of God should be working for you. The word is alive and God said and God saw. And God, look at Genesis chapter 1, a perfect example of how you establishes the will of God when you have no proof of anything working and God said and God saw and God said and God saw what will five loaves do with five thousand and more what will two small fishes do with five thousand and more what will water do with that crowd in that wedding can I say this to you the revelation that God is your source is a limitation breaker nothing breaks limitation like this revelation that God is my source God is my source. If it's your source, it means you are rising above intimidation. You are rising above limitation because God is your source. The word of God does not go on vacation. The word of God works in every season. Dry season, wet season, tough season, bad season, good season, whatever the name of the season is, the word of God work in every season. So the word works and Abraham believed God, it was counted for him for righteousness. He believed God, not knowing where he was going, but the man took a step. Hey, hey, not knowing where he was going, but he was going somewhere. He was going to the place of destiny. Can I say this to you? The revelation that God is your source changes your ideology of life. 
how you look at life. I have you see one of my prayers for you this year is that you meet people that will challenge your faith. I have this friend, and he told me something I will not forget. We we're eating somewhere, and look at me. He said every day money comes to him. And one of us were doing ministry, and we we're friends. He said every day as the day just break, the money has started coming. <laughs> I said no, I need to know how that thing is working. And <laughs> my man, no bum, no more. When I hear something where they walk up, where they in line with the word, I want to know, bros, how far that in the walk? And then the one shot scripture, he said like, like this, I believe God for this. I take scriptures on this. Ah, so make we go the walk now. Then somebody will hear and get offended. No, don't be offended. Ask questions, sir. How did that work? I thank God for that, my friend, who shared. You know, some people, something have been working for them. They are quiet. They won't share with you. I don't know what I get what I'm saying right now. They will never share with you. But if you have somebody who opens up and tell you the operating system of heaven, my brother, you're blessed. My sister, you're blessed. Why? Because they have made the journey easy. Instead of you breaking your head to go and find it out, they have already done your job 60%. Now you to find the rough what you add and then accelerate. Understanding. Let me show you a testimony. And this is a testimony of sensitivity. There was a day during this period, you know, some place they're not taking the old money. I think you know, some place they say they're taking the old money, new money. There is a lot of controversy, problem. So one morning we got a call from one of our children. They said they needed new money, and the lecturer said the what they will pay for is new money, not old money. I said, what kind of lecturer is this? I'm looking for new money. <laughs> looking for new money. And the man was smart. He wanted to use the student to achieve his mission. Was looking, no old money. If you come with old notes, said, go your way. We are, not, we are not talking to you. Go and bring new money. Lecturer who is looking for new money cannot find it. His children is sending to go and get him the new money. And if you bring your new money, then we'll have a conversation. And I was, we are looking for new money. Listen to this carefully. Positioning. Somebody came to look for me that morning. And brother, I tell him, we told him, wait, pastor is trying to fix something. The person was carrying all the new money I need. <laughs> I want to tell you how this matter they work. <laughs> all the new money, the person was carrying it. And he was carrying more. In short, he came to bless me that money. He was carrying the new money. What I was looking for inside my office, they tried to do mathematics to how we will package something. So I don't know how this man called that name, got a word from the spirit and said, let him go and ask that man whether he's carrying money. That's when we walk with the prophet, you have to see fast. <laughs> and when he approached the brother and said, uh, because he's a business person, he said, I, I was looking for new notes. Yes, I have new notes. And we exchanged the new notes with him. And he gave us the new notes. He took the old notes. So we said to the mother, so when he came to see me, he said, Pastor, I just came to bless you. I said, was blessing me. What I noticed was, no, 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 no. Then then they told me, Pastor, if you have already told him to come and see you first, you won't be having the problem you're having. Positioning. I pray for you this year. You'll be positioned. I, I pray for you this year. You'll be sensitive to the flow of the Spirit. There, see, sometimes you pray, God has already answered. The answer is before you. I pray that your eye will open to see the answer. You prayed, God don't answer. It's whether you be sensitive to enter into manifestation. To enter into manifestation requires sensitivity. To enter into manifestation of what God is doing requires what? Requires you to be sensitive. If you are not sensitive, you can miss your moment of visitation. God can bring a visitation your way. Something that will change your life your way. But you are not sensitive. Somebody can be dull. The way people are dull physically, they can be dull spiritually. Huh? The way people are dull physically, you know. Have you seen somebody say, Oh boy, put your leg where now? Oh boy, move like this now. Oh boy, do like that now. You're, you're gingering the person to go forward, you know. Something like that. Talk, you, you have met people like that before in your life. There are people who are like that spiritually. They are dull, sir. 
They are not able to connect. Have you seen people? They are in a place. And the person never knew that the landlord wanted to sell that place. It's a one that will just get out from this dirty house, this stupid house, this nonsense place that is not making sense. Very, very stupid place. I don't care. This place is smelling. It's foolish. Oh, talking. He didn't see. And then he moves out. Three months later, the man came to me. God has kept that house for him to buy. His pride, his flesh robbed him of the harvest. This year you shall not be robbed. I said this year. You, let me say this to you. Sometimes manifestation come after the insult. And the reason for the insult is to provoke you. <laughs> Satan, he will go provoke you. To move when God never moved you. And this is why it's good for you to listen to God. The man that God is going to help must learn to hear from God. That's anarchy. The man that God is going to help must learn to hear from God. If God is going to help you, you must learn to hear from him. The man that God is going to help is going to learn to hear from God. Can I say this to you, church? Hearing from God is everything. Hearing from God is everything. We got into one issue the other day. We were driving and, you know, I got to a particular point. I told my wife, should I go forward or I go this way? We are just between us, you know, like that. I didn't know. Policeman just stopped me. If I have gone that way, I could have not been stopped. And they collected 600 naira from me. So, <laughs> serious. <laughs> I felt so bad. I felt so bad. But I'm still growing in my work with God. Do we go this way or this way? You know, they, before you got into that mess, you had. Either you did not decode well. Either you did not, <laughs> yeah. Who knows what I'm talking about right now? You know, <laughs> either you did not decode well, or whatever that happened, you heard. <laughs> All your trouble begins from not either acting fast, as for when you have heard the voice of God. I paid, see, sorry, I'm, we're looking for money, and then somebody collected cash. I said, bro, I'm going to take this one. I said, no, there are officers where they are, they go need something to. Now, nah, nah, maybe the officer is their father and mother. Now, nah, we don't become their parents to feed the officers. Them. I don't know what I get what I'm saying. But if when I was telling them, do I, and do you know the road, the, the same road I needed to go through was the same road that finally passed again. So imagine I, I started going that same route without stopping. Can I say this to you? Hearing from God is a technology that you must master <laughs> the technology of hearing from God. My brother, my sister, you must master it to enjoy it because God can be saying something. If you are not sensitive, you'll be passive. And when you are passive, it no matter now. This is no matter. But let it go matter. No God is going to say no matter. And I'm very smart, you know. But it will matter later. The man that God is going to help must be a man who is hearing from God. And let me say this to you. Hearing from God, has that, that attitude has to be cultivated where hearing is not only when you want to make a, a great decision about your life or business or marriage or anything. Hearing has to be a way of life. Even in little things like driving, turn left. Go, go backward. Go this way. Stop here. Don't go through this road. Pass through this other road. Go through this. Here, it, it's not about, okay, I want to marry God. Who do I marry? It's more than that. Oh, oh, I need, you know, so hearing from God has to be a way of life. You're coming to church. You're always passing the same route. And the Holy Ghost said today, don't pass that route. Anyone knew where he told you, don't pass that road. The man God will help must be hearing from him. 
God helps you by listening. I say God helps you by you listening to him. That is how he helps you, by you listening to him. And listening to God begins with this decision to fellowship with him. The man that God is going to help must be the man who knows how to listen to God. Listening. Everybody is going left. God said, don't follow them. He said, well, God, if I don't follow them, I'll miss opportunity. Let me tell you what is opportunity. Opportunity is when you're following the voice of God. <laughs> opportunity is when you're doing it God's way. Opportunity is when God tells you, sit down here, you sit down, you sat, and all your friends have left. God says, sit. You, you're still there. That's opportunity. Opportunity is not going fast. Opportunity is hearing from God. If you master the act of hearing, you will have a life people will envy. If you can master the act of hearing from God, one of the keys to supernatural success and receiving supernatural help is connected to hearing, listening to God. It's not overnight. It's something you build. It's not overnight. It is something you build. It's not, and let me say this to you, if you begin to hear from God, you'll be more careful with your decisions. Because you'll not be making this decision before. No, you make decision after God has spoken. Not, you can't make a decision that you want God to back it up. No. You get what I'm saying? No, 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 that's not, that's not how I walk. You, for you to make a decision, God, what are you saying? It is what God is saying that forms the decision, that determines the decision, the decision you're about to make. It's not you making your decision, then you can't start praying about it and say, God, back the decision. That's not how God works. If you make a decision, back your decision. Uh-huh. Amen. Like somebody called me this evening, uh, somebody that used to say things for me, he, he's having a challenge in his marriage and he, the woman has run with the children and, you know, so many problems. And he married the lady according to him, did all the wedding things, snap picture, did everything. The people said now, he didn't marry the girl. That she couldn't marry her for the second time. The guy said, what's going to happen? Then the lady appeared in the city. He went and told the people, if you see the lady in the city, he's going to arrest the lady. So he called me this evening. I said, that he wants to go to court. I said, come and tell you something. That money we won't carry go to court. Put them for your business. This one had a distraction. If you don't carry the children, rest. Talk to God. Relax yourself. At a particular point, she got tired. You know what it means to raise three children? Alone, with this economy. And you don't have a job. You go tired one day, bring her for you. No fight. That money for police, no need. Just day at the start of your market. One day, you go wake up, say, Kai, I don't bear this burden too much. Eh? See your children, take them. I be their father. Eh, eh. That court matter. Sometimes it takes wisdom to win. It is not only fight that brings victory. Sometimes silence produces victory. Listen to the Holy Ghost. Listening to whenever you are dealing with problems of life, listen to the Holy Ghost. Listen to the Holy Ghost. Don't be conventional all the time. Make adjustment for the Spirit to hear. Make adjustment to flow with the Spirit of God. Sometimes something is going this way. God said, don't say anything. God, he says, don't say anything. I want to tell them what is in my heart. He said, don't tell them anything. God, and when God said, don't tell them anything, that is when your temptation to talk will come. How many of you know that? That your temptation to speak is when God said, don't speak. Hey! The Satan will just come and touch your emotions and say, say something. Let them know you are not playing with them. Let them know you can school them very well. <laughs> God said, don't say anything. But your emotions are coming to talk. Friends, let me say this to you. He knows why he says you shouldn't say anything. Three months later, you appreciate him. Say, God, thank you. That's, I was quiet about this matter. Because sometimes we say things and we damage everything. When he said, say nothing about it, it's because there is something he's preserving that you're not seeing. And it takes the wisdom of God for you to respond to the voice of God. I want to say that again. I said what? It takes the wisdom of God for you to respond to the voice of God. It takes the wisdom of God. It's not everything you have to fight. Some things hear from a Lord, should I be quiet? Look at David. When they came and broke through and carried their, his, men, his wife, 
carried their children, carried everything. The people that worked for him, they carried their children, they carried, they want to stone David. They were angry, they wept. The Bible said that David encouraged himself in the Lord is God. Then he asked God a question, should I pursue? He didn't just start running. Hearing from God is where you get your help from. Hearing from God, listening to God is where you get your help from. God cannot help a man who can listen to him. You, can you help somebody that cannot listen to you? No, no, it's impossible. God cannot help a man that can listen to him. This, that is why listening to God is the foundation for locking supernatural help. Listening to God. Watch your Bible from Genesis to Revelation. God is talking. He's telling people something. Don't go that way. And if they with the anointing, they will die. With the anointing, we we'll have a, a brother in the faith in this country, a great man of God, but it's an, but it's an army officer, a great army officer. Um, they were sent to fight in one of the forests and he, he looked at his boss and said, sir, if we go through this way by the spirit, this is not by army training now. Nobody will return. His boss looked at him, are you sure? He said, I'm telling you what the Holy Ghost is telling me. If we go through this way, nobody will survive. It's like some arguments want to come at it's okay, you and your men should go the right way. Ladies, other people go the other way. The people that went that way, he refused to go of them, and nobody came out. That is not Nigerian army training. This is the Holy Ghost. By the Spirit, you see death. Hearing from God. Hearing. He has gone to many wars and come back. This brother has gone to many wars. he be listening to the Holy Ghost. Lord, with direction. You're, he's carrying God, but asking Lord with direction. He's not by God. <laughs> Lord, which direction? A well trained soldier is asking God, which direction? Your tongue and your hearing. Let me say this to you. Hearing from God lays the foundation for continuous provision. As you hear, the Bible said the step of a good man is ordered by the Lord. You will just be ordering your step. Go left, go this way, go that way. And as you're following those steps, He's just making things happen for you. Hearing from God. The man that God will have must be a man who enjoys fellowship with him. The man that God is going to have must be the man who enjoys fellowship with God. Let me tell you, church. You have never seen miracles until you begin to trust him. It is when you begin to trust him, you will start seeing miracles. Miracles are supernatural manifestations. If God sustained them for 40 years, they lack nothing. He will sustain you for this week until governorship election pass, all the presidency election pass, all the things that will happen in the next eight months come to pass. God will sustain you. He sustained them for 40 years and they lack nothing. That scripture should be your focus. If you sustain them, you keep me. You keep me and my family. You keep us in provision. You keep us in good health. You keep us in longevity. The election have not started. They have started killing people. Somebody's car was bombed that was contesting for election. Bombed. And he died inside of it. That's to let you know how wicked the heart of men are. As you move in this season, flow with the Spirit. As you move in this season, church, am I talking to somebody right now? As you, if your body doesn't move you to move out, just stay indoor. Listen to the Holy Ghost. I said what? Listen to the Holy Ghost. The last day's believers must be believers that hear from God. The last day believers, if you're going to manifest the will of God, is connected to hearing. Now the day I, I had a place to go and preach, and the Holy Ghost said, today I don't think you should go there. Ah, if I don't go now, what will they think about me? And I need to do some things. I need to go. You know, sometimes God can be talking to us and we start giving ourselves reasons. Who have given themselves reasons why they should be there? Eh? You're not giving yourself reason, and when you got there, you regretted. You say, go, 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 go. What kind of stupid thing? If not, then I start to die now. They could say, Where is God? But the Nuno said, They could ask, Where is me? You know what happened in that journey that day? I started driving. Got to slaughter. 
cross lot as if I'm going to that road that lead to Mochi. Hmm. Come and see traffic. I have never seen that kind of traffic since my mother gave birth to me. I've never. The thing was not moving. Everybody was standstill. It was not moving. Left to right, everybody just stayed like that. 30 minutes on the pass. God said, fine, go and park your car and use your leg and start trekking. If you really want to reach people you want to reach. Ah, God. Do you know, brethren, I have to find where I reverse and park close to a, a particular church that was there and started trekking. Trekking. And I started regretting. That's how people lose their life. And they say, ah, they know see him for church. Say somebody be one died. They know see him. Why the person know see him? You're supposed to be seeing for yourself. You're the first prophet of your life. Nobody's supposed to see. If I see, I'm supposed to see second. I'm supposed to see first. Are you not a child of God? How many of you have the Holy Ghost inside of you? If you have the Holy Ghost, you're supposed to be seeing your life. Nobody should be seeing for you. Fellowship will produce revelation. I said fellowship will produce what? Will produce revelation. And fellowship will produce vision. And fellowship will produce uh, supernatural encounters and visitations. Fellowship will produce revelation. Fellowship will produce vision. When you fellowship with God, fellowship with his word, he will show you. He will reveal. Revealing is in the realm of fellowship. I said revealing is in the realm of fellowship. Revealing. God will reveal things to you when you are in fellowship. He will give you a dream, a prophetic dream. He will open your eyes to see. You begin to pray. Fellowship produce revelation. I said what? Fellowship produce what? Produce revelation. You are expected to see for yourself. You know how cool, you know, we have a neighbor across, it's late right now, a neighbor across the other way. And when I was living here, they used to come, we used to relate a lot, but they go to a particular church. And something happened. And they lost one of their child. A grown up girl that was in the school. And they were so angry and so angry at the pastor because the girl went to the church that day and came back at night and died. So the anger was why couldn't the pastor see a vision? Why couldn't the pastor see that the girl was going to die? Let me surprise you this evening. It is nobody's responsibility to see how your life will go out, how your life will go, or how your life will play out. It is your own responsibility to have fellowship with God for him to show you the things concerning your own life. It is you that it's supposed to be knowing how your life will play out. If any other person come and tell you that God said something, it's just an addition. But you are the one to be in fellowship to receive for yourself. You can't hold anybody accountable or hold anybody uh, responsible that your life didn't go the way it should go because you have the same access. You can assess God. You can connect with the Father. That is why we have fellowship. That is why we have time to pray. That is why we have time to read our Bible as God can talk to you as a person. We are not in the time when the Holy Ghost is just in the prophet, uh, uh, just come upon the prophet and some people and the minister. When the time the Holy Ghost lives inside every New Testament believer, that simply means you have an access to hear from God. You can hear from God yourself, but the problem is that a lot of Christians don't want to spend time with God. A lot of Christians don't want to fellowship with the word of God. A lot of Christians are waiting for quick fish for somebody to tell them, the enemy is after you, me is after you. No, you can have fellowship to have access to revelation. You can have fellowship to have access to the wisdom of God. You can have fellowship to have understanding of what is happening around you. You can hear from God for yourself. You don't need the pastor to hear from God concerning your life. You need you to hear from God concerning your life. Nobody should be blamed for anything that happens around you. You should be blamed. Why? Because you can hear from God. You can hear the voice of God. That day when, when I was gotten that leading, do I go this way or do I go this way? Well, I can blame my pastor. Say, ah, pastor, why did you do that? I will, they will now, police will now stop me. I'm not going to for me. I'm not going to judge again. Rubbish. 
What thing concerns my pastor and concern me for that junction? You don't know what the pastor is also going through. You don't know where the pastor is. I don't know. Develop relationship with God as you can hear from God yourself. This church, they need to see vision. No? They need to see vision for this church. Eh? I want you to go tell me all my problem. How many of you don't know my problem? Which of you here? We no no in problem. Anybody here? Your rent is due. You need to pay your rent. School fees is due. You need to pay school fees. You're believing God for car and you have saved one million naira and inflation have just hit. The car you price five million, the dad says seven point five. You know about it. Your mother is in the village asking for money for drugs. Your sister just called you from any good that they are cashless now. No money. You should send money. You say POS is not working here. You know the problem. You know the issue. You don't need somebody telling you your problem. You need somebody giving you a word. You need somebody teaching you, giving you a word. Fellowship will produce revelation. Fellowship will produce visitation. Fellowship, when you are spending time with God, there is a knowing you, you come into, there is a knowing you receive. The man that God will help will be hearing from God. How did we get this place? Hearing from God. A church was in Jubilee Park. And government came one day and said, uh, everybody in the park should leave the place. Give you two weeks to go. Oh, we don't have money. I started praying to find out the next direction. Your life, whether success or failure, is your responsibility. Your life, whether success or failure, is your responsibility. It's not your sister's responsibility, not your mother, not your father, not your uncle, not your pastor, not even Mr. Buhari. That's not the problem. You got to hear from God. And hearing from God begins with fellowshipping with God. You wake up in the morning, open that Bible. How can somebody wake up in the morning, the next thing is to start crying. I will cry, pay them, bring the money now. What kind of cry is that one now? You wake up in the morning, I verse it, the verse. You the verse your father who don't die since. If he has kept something, if he has kept something, now you keep something. If he, has kept, if he has kept something, something like this now, I don't know if my father kept something. So big man, nonsense man, will not do anything for him. So he do something. He did this. A man who done that 30 years ago. <laughs> the verse, the verse. Congo village, went and see the man grim. And, <coughs> nonsense. Stupid man. Don't, no, no die work. Nobody's a problem, Ross. <laughs> see, it's nobody's a problem. I was telling somebody today, I said, you even came from a good place. Your father even have something, a, a house. I was telling one of my dad, I came from where there is nothing. So I just know that I owe myself a responsibility to break my ground. The earlier you start your breaking of your ground, the better for you. Because what the enemy will do is that he puts you in a position to say that and to make you blame everybody and exonerate yourself from the situation. That's what the devil will do. The devil will make you blame everybody but exonerate yourself from the situation and that is what is called deception. Self-deception. In fellowship we hear. In fellowship we see. In fellowship we receive. In fellowship, the man that God is going to help must be a man hearing from God. Now that was praying and God said, you have somebody in church Ask her for your, her land. Ask her. I just approach her. Say, yes, Pastor, we have a place, so, but you have to apply for it. I said, okay. Are we? I applied. They brought me here. This place was grass everywhere. Three. Grass. All kinds of things. A word from God. Your next level is in a word from God. Your next level is connected to a word from God. Your next dimension is connected to a word from God. If you are not hearing from God, it will be difficult for you to be helped by God. How will he help you? How is God going to help you? If God will help you, imagine I wasn't praying. And I sit and start crying. Hey, ministry. Which kind of ministry be this one now? God has said, I did by my own, he can't call me. God, I don't tie for this your ministry. Carry this your ministry and leave, make a rest. <laughs> that won't solve my problem. But while I begin to pray, there was a flow of the spirit. You must train yourself to pray and to hear is the master key for your success. 
You must train yourself to pray and to hear from God is the master key to your success. You must train yourself. When the battle gets tough, it's not tears. It's spending time with God. It's spending time with God. The dear friend is going to clock, going to clock a particular age, 50, and he, 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 he shared something with me that got my attention. He said, Pastor, I, I don't want to just enter this 50 for, I want something spiritual to happen to me. And we need to pray. We need to pray for days before I enter into this my 50th. I want to make impact. Let me tell you something about life. It takes spiritual energy to generate uncommon results. It takes spiritual energy to generate uncommon results. If there is a result you want to generate, the first thing is to generate the spiritual energy. And that spiritual energy is connected to fellowship. That energy is connected to fellowship. He said, can you, can you create a schedule, a time for me that we can spend days for three weeks praying to be able to unlock. Let me tell you this. Find a friend that prays. Find somebody who could pray with you. Somebody who knows the word. Though. Somebody who could tell you story, story. Somebody who knows the word that can tell you, brother, I feel this in my spirit. This is what God is saying. And you check it with the word of God. It's connecting. Fellowship is the key. Don't neglect fellowship and expect that things will change around you. Nothing changes until it changes inside. Nothing changes until you spend time with God. I said, nothing change until you begin to spend time with God. Nothing will change. The situation will remain the same. There are problems that tears can push away. Oh, oh, you won't cry. Begin to cry now. When you cry, finish. The problem is the wait. There are situations that tears will never take them away. What will take them away is spending time with God to get a strategy that will change the situation. No matter how you pray, it's spending time with God. I'm confused. Holy Ghost, show me what to do. If God is going to help you, you have to be spiritually minded. You have to be spiritually minded. Most of your problem or most problem you face sometimes, you overcome by knowledge. You have come by wisdom. You have come by hearing from God. Romans chapter 8 from verse 5. Romans 8 from verse 5. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Romans 8 from verse 5, he said, For those who live according to the flesh set their mind on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. And verse 6, he said, For to be carnally minded is death. Do you know as a Christian you can be carnally minded? What does it mean to be carnally minded? I'm supposed to believe what God's word said, but I'm believing what I feel. If I believe what I feel, it means I'm carnal. The word of God said by his stripes I'm healed. Eh, but uh, the that woman, no be waiting kill him. No be waiting kill him. Give that word of God something. That's carnality. That kind of conversation is what is being carnally minded. My God will supply all my need, but hmm, for this cash that come on you. <laughs> need now. Nobody get money now. Some people get money. Don't say nobody gets. People get. They may not tell you, but they have money loaded. Back skips on. <laughs> Amen. Ah, to get money now, they very hard for people. Oh, he did very hard for me, self. You're being carnally minded. God will supply all your need. It's not only money that can buy something. Favor can bring bread. You didn't hear me well no. Favor can bring me to your house. You don't believe in that? Favor can bring an open door, can bring one bag of rice. People are complaining, but people are doing transfer. Money is dropping, moving hand heavily. Whoa! Crazy transfers. To be carnally minded is to reject what God has said and believe what you feel. That is to be carnally minded. Is to exalt the opinion of people above the word of God. That is being carnally minded. To exalt ah, the way things they this the person go survive. 
person feed that you stop that confession, you're not gonna die. Will long life will God satisfy you? Fellowship will produce revelation. Don't forget it. I said what fellowship will produce revelation. When you are in trouble, begin to spend time to fellowship. In the course of fellowship, you will hear from the Father. You will have a strategy from heaven that will change your story. That's how we come to this place. And the woman brought us here and said, Pastor, I don't have anything to give you, no money to help you. I said, no worry, you have already given us the place. We're going to trust God. And that's how we came here and trusted God. The Bible said the step of a good man is ordered by the Lord. When you are dealing with tough season, increase your fellowship increase your devotion what I mean by that if you are spending 30 minutes with God go to one hour go to two hours instead of sitting down to cry that time sit down to be praying in tongues sit down and be making confession sit down and be looking for scriptures sit down instead of saying I, I, I'm confused I don't know what I'm going to do with my life you are declaring you're looking for scriptures. Some people cannot even read their Bible. They are going through tough time. All they will do is to be on social media looking for quotes. When one door closes, another door will open. It says who? Nobody be God, though. Nobody be God. <laughs> My own time will come. Good time. Hi, good morning. Come. Flesh does not produce strength. Fellowship produces strength. By strength shall no man prevail. Read them. Flesh does not produce strength. It's fellowship. It's fellowship. Let me tell you one of the benefits of fellowship. As you begin to spend time with God, your emotions will be under control. One of the benefits of spending time with God is that your emotions will be under control. Instead of pressure, joy. Instead of pressure, peace. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding it has overtaken your heart. Glory be to God. Fellowship. The man that God will help will find his way to God. Will find his way to God. You know, some of you now you have maybe relations that will help you or people that will stand with you. People like us who have to trust God for everything, including the water we're going to drink. Including the water that we'll drink. Trusting God for it. Trusting God for the biscuits. Trusting God for everything. You're believing God for this. You're believing God for that. You're believing God for this. Faith has a womb. Somebody said, Show me Bible. Hmm? You can conceive so many things in line with God's word and deliver at different seasons. Faith womb. You can conceive this, 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 this. And begin to fellowship. Incubation. Incubating. Fellowship. Somebody here has to go to a place of fellowship. There are people who are getting tired and said, I don't know what to do with my life. I don't know what to do with my life. Begin by going to fellowship. Nobody, we don't have anybody that will help us. Begin by fellowship. Fellowship means spend time to pray. Spend time to read your Bible. Spend time to meditate. Spend time to worship with song. Begin to enjoy spending time with God. As you start doing that, he will start showing you what to do. Complaining will not change your situation, but fellowship will no matter how bad your situation is, from the place of fellowship you will go up. Believe me. No matter how bad I've, I've been in, man, I've been in situations that people will ask me, Apostle, how are you going to come out from this situation? How are you going to come out? Do you know what it means to face situations that what millions and you know get 50k? You know what it means? The pressure alone can lead to high blood pressure. The pressure alone from it can make you become sick. But because I was fellowshipping, I was developing confidence to trust in what God can do for me. Fellowship is the way out when you don't know what to do. 
Fellowship is also the way out when you think you know what to do. In good times and in bad times, maintain fellowship, sir. I don't know who I'm talking to. You are, you are like confused. You are like worried. No. No. God is the answer. Believe me, church. God is the answer. I don't know what to do, but he knows what to do. He knows. He said, without me, I can do nothing. It means without you spending time with me, without you fellowshipping with me, without you hearing from me, without you staying connected to me, you would not be able to do it. He said, by strength shall no man prevail. There is something that happens in the realm of fellowship. God begins to show you steps to take. The man that God is going to help must be the man who enjoy his presence. Enjoy his presence. Enjoy his presence. Enjoy his presence. He said, for the mechanically minded is dead. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. As you renew your mind, you're becoming more spiritually minded. You're becoming more spiritually minded. Some people ask me a question, how are we going to do that? I say, God will do it. God have done it. We we'll have provision. We we'll have supply. We we'll have help. God, God has done it. Hallelujah. I'm not going to stress myself about it. I'm not going to worry about this. God will take care of said, Casting all your cares. As simple as that scripture is, it can keep your blood pressure normal. He said, casting all your care that he carried for you. You want to worry about this, worry about that. Why? Okay. <laughs> you know, well, listen to Kenny Hagin. The wife said that, God, they were going through some challenges. And the wife said, Hagin, the way I'm looking at things, if me and these children die, I don't, I don't think you'll worry about us. He said, how can I worry after you die? There is nothing to worry anymore. You are dead. <laughs> ah! I scream in my room. I say, hey, again. <laughs> I say, you're dead already. Right? There is nothing to worry about dead people. <laughs> Kai! The woman saw the man on the edge. She didn't give me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 So what am I to worry about? You're dead. You're dead. Because what it doesn't change anything. What it does is to increase confusion. People that worry. People that worry, that live a life of worry, will always make bad choices. Most times people make bad choices. They are worrying, worrying until they start choosing and doing things they are not supposed to be doing. Why? Because they are not casting their cares on God. Casting your care on God is the key to protecting your emotional health. Casting your cares on God is the key to protecting, securing your emotional health. I'm not going to worry about this. I'll give it over to God. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to worry myself. I'm going to thank God. I'm going to rest. And God, how many of you pray and say, God, take over this thing and you don't worry about it again? You prayed and say, God, I hand over this thing to your hand. You know, we sang the song, we are handing over, handing over into God's hand. Sometimes we hand over, then we say, God, bring up. That thing we hand over, I no hand them over. I no hand them over to you well. I won't collect them. We'll finish praying, say, God, thank you for taking care of this situation. The next minute we sit down and we'll begin to worry about the situation is because our mind has not been renewed to trust in God's ability. When your mind is renewed to trust in God's ability, you don't worry about it. If you prayed about it, it means it's settled. You prayed about that matter, it means it's settled. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to worry about it. He said, casting your cares upon him. They care about your daughter, about your son, about your children, and you don't like the way they are going. Just cast the cares on God. Do what you can do as a parent. Love on them and say, God, I trust you with these children. That was what Billy Graham did for his son. When the son of Billy Graham left home, the same thing for a robot. The same thing for a robot. And they cast their cares on God. Let me tell you one of the keys to victory, trusting God. Let me tell you one of the keys to victory, trusting God. Learning to cast your cares on God. See, if you're worrying about it, it's because you have not trusted God with it. 
If you're worrying about anything and you tell me, Pastor, I've prayed about it, it's because you have not trusted God with it. If you trust God with it, you stop worrying about it. Out of a mess, God can bring out a mercy. Out of a very dirty situation, a very ugly situation that smells in the nose of people before people, God in his mercy can make it turn good. That is the God we serve. We don't serve a God who makes mistakes. We serve a God who perfects the mistakes we make and bring it as a miracle, as an open door, as a blessing. And if you're here tonight and you've made some mistake, let me tell you this. God is so good that he can turn your mistake into miracles. And stop blaming yourself. Oh, I wish I made this decision. I wish I made this decision. If I have made this decision now, I could have not been in this condition. Let me say this to you. The condition is a product that God can use to produce miracles. Stop blaming yourself for the moment and the seasons you lost. Begin to praise God. He will show you a way to recover. Begin to praise God. He will show you the way to recover. I regret of this. Oh, if I have done this. Oh, if I have done this. When people begin to worry about their life and regret about their life, what happens is that they become depressed. Depression comes. And depression means you're not trusting God. Because if you're trusting God, you'll be in joy. If somebody you're here, you're depressed, you're trusting yourself. That's why you're depressed. If you're here, you're depressed, consigning any situation is because you're trusting in yourself. But once you stop trusting yourself, what will happen is called joy. Because when God take, his, take it over, you have nothing to worry about anymore. When God takes over that thing, you put it in his hand, he says, Father, I thank you that you, you make a way. I learned something many years ago. I was looking for a house and uh, then I was living in Bonnie Street and the government told us they gave us two weeks to park. So I have this agent who went out to look for a house. Man, that day, from morning we were crowd see the least that time evening period I came back so tired I said God help me we now went and saw one house the guy now spoke in Igbo language pastor the bulldozer keep making move into this kind of house <laughs> in Igbo language what it means that that the time I was packing to this kind of house is showing me right now is when the, the government have brought a bulldozer out to the bulldozer place. That's when I can pack it because we couldn't find anywhere. I was tired. I noticed something. When I said, God, please help me. I'm tired of my search. Help me. Ooh. How many of you know that it's only when you ask for help, help is released? Sometimes we're doing things we have not asked God for help. We know what to do. Some of you here, you know what to do. You're very smart. Ah, some of you. You know what to do. You know who to call. You know what to do. So sometimes God, they look at you. They do now. They do. I think you know what to do. They do. I they see you. Try. Clap for yourself. You don't do, 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 do. For six months, you don't tire. Me, I don't know what to do. While I was praying to that, I said, God, please just help me to fulfill my destiny. That's what my prayer. Please help me. <laughs> help me. Don't help me, sir. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. If you ask my boss, you know what to do? I don't know what to do. He has to show me what to do. Please help me. And because I don't know what to do, he continued to show me what to do, and I'm taking those steps, and the result is huge. When you think you can do it, the pressure of it can bring so much frustration, so much frustration. You see yourself, you are irritated. We came back, I was tired. I was so tired. 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 I don't know who I'm talking to. He said, Lord, just help me. It's a simple prayer, but he hears it. It's a simple prayer. God, help me. God, help me. Don't be too proud not to ask for help. Don't be too proud to say, God, don't help me. No, say, God, help me. I receive help. God, help me with this issue. You have been trying to solve the issue. You have talked. You have shouted. You have robbed. Has it worked? It doesn't work. Ask God to help you. Ask him to help you. He knows what will change the situation. And as I asked him to help me, the next day, a different agent, a few days later, a different agent came and carried me to a place, very small, beautiful house. Very beautiful house. 
was more beautiful than all the ones we saw. Very portable for young people. I said, Kai. And we asked, how much was the rent? 80,000. One bedroom flat. 80,000. And the owner of that house lives in London. So when they called the woman, she finally came around because she was in Portacol that period. And said, I was told you, the pastor. I said, yes, ma. He said, what do you believe? I told her what I believe. He said, okay, I'll give you the house. Do you know that this house, while I was in London building it, God asked me to paint it that the pastor was coming to live in it. Wow. The step of a good man is ordered by the Lord when the good man asks God for help. <laughs> Who get that right now? I said the step of a good man is ordered by the Lord when the good man asks God for help. God, please help me. That's how they pray. God, please help me. I don't know what to do about this one. Help me. Help me. Help me. And then he can just send somebody to just help me with something. Maybe with an encouragement, with a word, with finance, with something. When I say, God, help me, I've opened the channel for receiving. One of the keys to receive to say, God, help us. Don't say, ah, I am I'm saving, I'm saving. You see, I'm planning. Oh, I'm, my brother. <laughs> my strength shall no man prevail. How many people here who don't save money to do something and something conquer the money? Wave your hand, let me see. Okay, nobody. Only one person. Ah, oh, few person. You save, 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 save. This problem I'm going to solve. You. And one problem came and took the money from you. It's good to save, but by saving shall no man prevail. I'm not against people saving. Save money. Save as much as you can save. Plan your life, but don't put your faith in your planning because there are situations that shows up that your plan cannot handle. You need to consistently look up to him. Amen? The beauty of living by faith is that you will never have emergency that will be above your faith. Hmm. That's a word for somebody. Kai, that's powerful. I said the beauty of living by faith is that you will never have an emergency that will be above your faith. He will always make a way. That's the beauty of living by faith. That's the beauty of trusting God. You will never have an emergency that will be above that faith. You will, you will find your way up. Before they will talk, ah, you're to, ah, are you always on time? How are you always getting it? <laughs> Let me tell you the secret. They're always in faith. If you are always in faith, you're always in victory. I said what? If you are always in faith, you're always in victory. If you're always in faith, you're always in rest. If you're always in faith, you are always in victory. I cast my cares on God. I'm not going to worry about this. I had a child out of wedlock. Don't bother yourself. Give that child to God and God is going to do something big with that child. You look at the situation of your family. It looks like nobody's making progress. Cast your cares on God. Those who win with God will rest in his word. Those who win with God. I said what? They will rest in his word. I'm not going to worry about these bills. My God will supply all my needs. I will take a step of faith. But God is my source. I will take a step of faith. I will take a step of faith. Amen. For everything you are trusting God for. Cast your cares on him. Where are we going to get money to buy this? To build this? To do that? Our God will supply all our needs. Yes. Living by faith is one of the most exciting experiences. I thank God that God gave me the message of faith to preach. Ah, how, how will this life look like this for me today? Life could have been boring without faith. The exciting part of life is to live by faith. To know that it's a God to trust. And to know that it's a God who supplies. Aye. Nothing is as beautiful like that. To know there is a God to trust. There is a God who supplies. 
Nothing is as beautiful as that. Oh, this night we are going to sleep without food. Because you don't have food in your house, does it mean that God does not have food for you? I have one of our sisters, she was sharing a testimony. She came to church one time and uh, they don't have food. I didn't even know they don't have food to eat. And she got home with the children. They are about to sleep and they have not eaten. <laughs> Somebody knocked the door. Ha, ah, they said, Who's coming to disturb us this night now? Night has already come out. The person came with the food. Can I say this to you? We have a miracle working God. Miracles are for today. Anybody who don't believe in miracle, in what Nigeria is about to go through in the eight months from now, if you don't believe in miracle, you won't get to eight months. You have to believe in miracle to survive the results that will be called by next weekend. You need to have believe in miracles to survive the outcome of the results. You need to believe in miracles to be sustained. I'm just preparing you as a church. This is the time to bring out your Bible. The, your Bible should not be dusty now. Open it. Some people say, don't forget where the Bible did. Some people, their, their phone, only what's in there in a cartoon, Tom and Jerry. That's what is in there. Oh, let me tell you, when real life hit, all those, cannot help you. Some of their phone have more movies than it has the word. <laughs> no movie can solve your problem. When the thing don't hit, it takes revelation to overcome pressure. It takes revelation to drown pressure. Somebody needs to be hearing the word of God and making confession. My God will supply all my needs. No weapon form against me shall prosper. My going out is blessed. My coming in is blessed. I'm blessed in my going out. I'm blessed in my coming in. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. The morning is coming today. There is a provision for us in this house. My supply is beyond our needs. In the name of Jesus, we have provision. We have provision. Wife, that is what to be saying in the kitchen. There is provision in this house. There is rice. There is beans. Ah! This has empty air. Eh? Now, wow. Oh. That's in God. What kind of confession is that? You know, there are people that can be around you. They are faith spoilers. They spoil your faith. They, they, they ruin your faith. My God says, supply and live. They can supply you. Amen. Hi. Have you seen some people? Make him come. Oh. <laughs> Me. Now look at the look. Where did they look? What about your faith? Me, I know they would have faith something, you know. Me. You know, consign me. As I did like this, if when I bring a job, when I no bring down on our business. No. Your faith got to be working. <laughs> the pastor was coming for one of our meetings here. So he met a lady and told her, the lady asked, where are you going to say he's going to discovery? He asked the lady, why not join me? Hmm. So that can't fit. I don't want to practice that kind of faith. That faith too hot. They're too raw. But this is the faith that survived now. Eh? This is the faith that will survive the days to come. Because the days to come, you need miracles. Church, are you hearing what I'm saying right now? You need the hand of God. Because people will have the money sometimes, but the price of things. So we will make up for the other one. Am I talking to somebody right now? So the faith to believe God that I'm going to buy with what I have. I'm going to have favor. As I go to this market, I'm having favor in the name of Jesus. Anybody hearing what I'm saying right now? You're going to this market with 10,000 naira, with 5,000 naira, with 6,000 naira. Our God will supply all our needs. Our God will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. There's provision in this house. I decree and I declare that God will supply. And if you're in faith, you're in victory. 
If you are in faith, you are in strength. If you are in faith, you are championing the cause of victory. I'm talking to somebody here tonight. If you are in faith, you are seeing possibility. Finally, is the man who gives thanks. The man who gives thanks. Thanksgiving will do wonders in the days of scarcity. The man God will help will give thanks. The bread was not enough, but he lifted it up and he gave thanks. Which kind of small money be this one now? This one, what he go do for me? No, give thanks. Give thanks. Ah, the money is not even much. Why are you complaining? Give thanks. Let the provider multiply the seed. Your husband came and gave you five thousand naira to buy something. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. No, now you have received five thousand. Start praying in tongues. Start speaking the word. Start speaking the word and say, Lord, I thank you that you're going to give me the wisdom to utilize this five thousand naira. I receive the wisdom to utilize this five thousand naira. I receive the wisdom to know what to buy and what to do. When you start giving thanks, you start breaking the laws of limitations. You break the laws of limitations and resistance by thanksgiving. The scripture said, out of those that proceed thanks, he will multiply. You thank God, Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Not worried about nothing. Not worried about anything. I thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Not worried about anything. Not worried about it. Not going to stress concerning this. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming through. Thank you, sir. I give you praise. There's somebody here. You're asking God to change your wardrobe. Start thinking. Clothes are coming. I don't know who you are. You're tired of your clothes. But I heard God say clothes are coming. <laughs> How does this prophecy make sense? When people are in a cashless economy, you don't need to even buy clothes. Somebody gave me a testimony the other day and said, Pastor, do you know really I was trusting God for jackets? Because God put it in my heart to bless the fellow. He said, I've been trusting God that he told his boss that he wanted to buy some jackets, some suits that he'll be using for going to work. But here comes God. There's somebody I saw here tonight. You are uncomfortable with your wardrobe. God said he wants to take care of it. I didn't hear him. Okay. He said, but what I need right now is Gary. It's not the uh, clothes. <laughs> the God who bring clothes will bring Gary. <laughs> the, the God who bring clothes will bring things. Come on, come on, come on, somebody, come on, come on, come on. Are you here tonight? Huh? The God who brings clothes. Clothes is luxury now for some people. For some people, it's not luxury. But we serve a God who can bring clothes and bring fish, bring rice. Bring beans, bring yam, bring needles, <laughs> bring egg, <laughs> bring money. So if he said, I want to take care of your wardrobe. Hmm. If you are speaking luxury item, that means those are the small, small ones. They are coming with it. Eh? If he can say, I want to change your wardrobe, it means there are other things he's changing. He's changing your plates. <laughs> He's changing the meals. Kai Kadobo Shandalaboba. He's changing things. Our God is a miracle worker. Let me give you this text minute and I'll close. I needed to eat a chicken one day. And there's a particular kind of chicken I wanted to eat. But I didn't say it because I didn't want to eat money for some things at home so I came to church to preach for somebody's wedding 
ministered and I left. I got home, I was resting. They told me somebody was looking for me. The person came with a bag of chicken. Well prepared, seasoned, beautiful chicken. I said, ah, Pastor, I did. I said, I didn't find no. Pastor, I brought chicken. I brought chicken. <laughs> Ooh. I opened it. I started eating the chicken. God said, one chicken. I got your back. I got your back. I got your back. How many of you know that God wants to take care of you? He wants to take care of you. <laughs> there is somebody here. Before the end of this week, you will hear testimony. God has singled you out for a miracle. What you consider a burden is now a stepping stone for supernatural increase. Help has come. I said, Help has come. I said, help has come. I said, help. If you're here and God has done something for you before, lift up your hand. If you're here, God has done something for you before, lift up your hand. Now that you have lifted up your hand, the same way he did that thing, is the same way he's going to do this one. If he has done anything for you before, either give you a job or give you food or send somebody to help you or send somebody to encourage you, he has done anything for you. Let's stand on that. Everybody rise on your feet. If God has done anything for you, I want you to stand on that testimony and say, Lord, you have done this for me. You are going to do this one before me. If you're in this service this evening, and God have done something for you. There is anything God have done for you. It may be a job. It may be a finance. It may be a day you had nothing. And from nowhere someone just came. And said God said I should give you this. <laughs> Look at this testimony. Hear this testimony to bless you. I heard it from a young man that helps me sometimes. He said Pastor. That he called somebody he has never called for four years. And I know the person, another friend of ours. He said, he called him just, he was driving. And God said, call this person. So he packed his car and called the person. The person said, ah, thank God say he called me. He said, they talk to me right now. I know you didn't get money. My wife is in a critical condition. And he said, that is why I was calling. And he transferred the money. How can somebody be? And before then, he has called other people. Nobody was helping him. There is a miracle working God. There is a God who can stop somebody who is driving. Somebody driving and park his car to make a call. Somebody you have not heard from for four years. What can he not do? So if you're here, there is an area where God has done a miracle. Maybe it's a healing. Maybe it's a deliverance. Maybe it's a provision. Maybe it's an area where God has come for you before. I want you to stand with that testimony and say, God, this one that is before me will be done to. This one, if you have ever received something that you never asked anybody for, you didn't discuss with anybody, and suddenly it happened. I want you to stand on that testimony and begin to prophesy. The same way God helped you with that, is going to help you with this. Lift up your voice and begin to turn to God. The same way God helped you with that. It's going to help you with this one. The same way. The same way. The same way God helps you. Yes, yes, receive sister. Receive brother. Receive. Receive. The same way.
God helped you with that situation in the past. He's helping you with this one now, right now. The same way. If he has done it before, he will do it again. Come on. He's doing it again. You survive COVID. You will survive the election. And it outcomes. You will survive whatever cashless policy. Miracles will be happening. God will be giving you money to transfer. <laughs> For the things you, your card will be active. I prophesy to your ATM card that your card will be active. Every time the card is charged, it pays. Kaduma Kadado. Every time the card is charged, it pays. Loma Mama. Every time they slot it in, it pays in the name of Jesus. I prophesy upon your card. Every time that card reaches a place, it pays. It pays. I prophesy to that card. It will not be empty. If they are going cashless, you have enough on your card. To buy, to pay for things. Makuri gade shekoma la kaya baba. Reke tele koma saka baba. If he has done it before, he's doing it again. Malende bo sekete li kara da 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 da. If he has done it before, he's doing it again. Mashoko da baba. You don't do what make any yo. In a big way. Jehovah don't do what make any yo. In a big way, he don't do a make no. In a big way, Jehovah don't do a make any yo. In a big way, he don't do one for you. Eh? In a big way, Jehovah don't do one for you. Eh? In a big way, he don't do one for me. Eh? In a big way, Jehovah don't do one for me yet. In a big way, He don't do one for me yet. In a big way, Jehovah don't do one for me yet. In a big way, He don't do one for us yet. In a big way, Jehovah don't do one for us yet. In a big way, he don't do one for you. Eh? In a big way, Jehovah don't do one for you. Eh? In a big way, that's gonna be our song. Don't do one for you. In a big way, in a big way, in a great year, I prophesy that this year you will not go empty handed. I prophesy, church, hear me as a prophet tonight. I prophesy that this year, what you have not been able to do for the past 20 years of your life, for the past 10 years of your life, for the past 5 years of your life, things you tempted to do, but every time you decide to do it, there is either a failure, there is a resistance, then I sing this song for you. He don't do one for you, eh? In a big way, Jehovah don't do one for you, eh? In a big way, He don't do one for you, eh? In a big way, Jehovah don't do one for you, eh? In a big way. This is prophetic. He don't do one for you, eh? In a big way, Jehovah don't do one for me, eh? In a big way, He don't do one for you now. In a big way, Jehovah don't do one for you now. In a big way, He don't settle your matter. In a big way, Jehovah don't settle your matter. In a big way, in don't answer your prayer. In a big way, Jehovah don't answer your prayer. 
in a big way. He don't do one for you, eh? Sister, in a big way. Jehovah, don't do one from you, eh? In a big way. One of the things God told me is that the fruit will come early. My little son looked at me and said, Daddy, God is doing so much for you. Look at what God is doing for you. If a little boy could feel the visitation of God's goodness, I prophesy to you. I came here tonight by the unction of Jehovah Jireh. I'm sent by God to tell you that what you have not been able to do that every time you try to do it you feel this resistance the cloud has given way I said the cloud has given way whatever that have hindered your rising your going forward your making progress tonight will cut it off in the name of Jesus and I declare that this year when people are crying you'll be smiling when people are saying we don't know what to do you will look around and say the lifter of my head you're the one the lifter of my head look at people crying around me but you just singled me out and you're just blessing me they say the blessing is one-sided that's what they will say about your life they will say the blessing is one-sided on your life that look at everybody is crying but you are saying that you're blessed and the blessing is made manifest i prophesy to you your fruits will come early i said your fruit will come early there is somebody here that God says should say to you, I will give you a double for your shame. I will give you a double for the reproach you went through, for the pain you went through, for the humiliation you went through, for the mockery you went through. I will give you a double. Receive in the name of Jesus. I prophesy to you, the fruits will come early. It has started in my life as your prophet. Is coming down to you wherever you are right now. Wherever you are right now, hear me. That prophetic word that God shared with me and said, My son, the fruit will come early this year. The things that are supposed to take you five years to do, you will do this year. The fruit coming early, early, on time, on time. The fruit coming early. You are supposed to start building a house in five years. You started building it this year. A project that will take five years in five months, you're completing. A project that will take two years and six months, you're finishing. Receive speed in the name of Jesus. I said, Receive speed in the name of Jesus. I said, In the name of Jesus, receive a supernatural speed. The fruits are coming early early results you are not part of the suffering I cut you off from that place I cut you off from that place you are not part of the toiling in the name of Jesus results is coming hey. I'm hearing testimony already somebody in our midst is going to have a testimony by the end of next week receive in the name of Jesus <laughs> the fruits are coming early thank you father thank you father thank you the lifter of my head people say they don't know what to do you will know what to do he will show you what to do he's your father he's your father he's a good father i prepare a table before you <laughs> i prepared a table before you says the lord i prepared a table before you they will watch you eat I said they will watch you eat. If anyone make himself to be an enemy to you, they will watch you eat and their job is to wash the plates. <laughs> yeah. 
if anyone said he's going to be your enemy they will watch you eat on the table and their job is to wash the plates that's the assignment hallelujah glory be to god <laughs> thank you father you are blessed i said you're blessed i said you're blessed i said you're blessed your gates are open your doors are open your gates are open your doors are open i said your gates are open i said your doors are open i said your gates are open i said your doors are open the window of heaven is open and it's pouring in blessing tonight in the name of jesus receive in the name of jesus receive help receive mercy receive provision in the name of jesus somebody will give you a call like i got a few days ago can your account receive money lift up your hands help has come you'll be swimming in help you will never know another day of pressure because the flood of help has arrived this help came like a flood you are swimming inside of it thank you father in jesus mighty name amen quickly we're going to take our offerings and our tithes hallelujah